Hey everyone, this is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo, and I wanted to just show you a really cool feature inside of Articulate Storyline 360. And this actually may work with uh, Storyline 2 and Storyline 1. And essentially, it's a way to be able to toggle the true and false variable on and off. And so to either true or false pretty easily instead of having to set specifically, okay, once this is clicked, set it to false. And then if this is clicked again, if it's false, then set it back to true. So it, you don't have to set up a lot of triggers. And as soon as I found out how to do this, it basically changed a lot of the different interactions that I could create and to be able to do that pretty easily. So I essentially right here have two different things. I have a light switch and a light bulb. Now each of the light switches, and this is just what I'm starting out with, uh, each of the light switches, you can see here on the timeline, I named it the switch and then I named it bulb just so when I'm setting my triggers, I can know exactly what I'm going to be changing because we're going to be changing the states based on the variable. And if I select the switch, I'm going to go ahead and go to states and you can see we have a normal state, which is off, and then I have an on state. So you can see the light basically flips up and down. And so it'll be on, but if it's not on, it goes back to the normal, which is basically off at that time. Now the bulb... We have a very similar setup, so we have a normal, which is off, and then we have an on, which is uh, basically just the on state, which now the light bulb flickers on. So one thing I had to do in here is I had to make sure that my Photoshop was these files that I created inside of Photoshop were exactly the same size dimensions. And so I could easily place these here without it moving over slightly. And so it doesn't look like it's a completely new light bulb. It's essentially just the same light bulb with now it glowing. And so it's just some of the prep that I had to do inside of Photoshop. Just keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back into timeline and then I'm going to minimize that. So we're going to come into our slide, our slide triggers and we're going to add a couple different triggers. And the, but before I do that, I want to make sure that I add a variable. So I'm going to come into my variable section and I'm going to have this variable and this is going to be a true and false variable. And I'm going to have it set to false by default because it's going to be off by default. And then when it's on, it's going to be true. So I always like to think of true and false as off and on. So true means that it's on and false means that it's off or, you know, that it's true means that it's uh, items been visited false that it means that an item has not been visited. So that's really how very a true and false variable can be used instead of articulate storyline. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new variable and I'm going to call this variable. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to call this lights on or light. Let's make sure that's plural. And so we're just going to say lights on. Actually, it doesn't even have to be plural, but I'm going to go ahead and select the drop down box and then select true and false. This is going to be a true and false variable. It's either going to be true or it's either going to be false. That's really as simple as it gets. Now, the default one is going to be off. So I want to make sure that I go ahead and set that to false and then click OK. And so we have our variable set up. And one thing I like to do as I'm programming is I like to troubleshoot the variable. So I'm going to go ahead and click on insert, come into my text box. And then I'm going to, the way that I can see the value of a variable on stage is by entering the name of the variable within these percentage signs. So I'm going to go ahead and say lights on. And you have to make sure that you have the capital L, capital O, if that's how you spelled it. Just it has to match exactly how you, how you created the variable inside of Storyline. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this and see what it looks like so far. And we should see that variable name set to false by default. And then I'm going to set a trigger to set it to true if it's set to false. So you can see here, yep, there it is. It's set to false by default. And so to set that to true, I don't need to check to see if it's false to begin with. And then set it to true or vice versa. All I need to do is set one trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and add this trigger. And I'm going to click on adjust variable. And I'm going to select the variable to be lights on. That's the uh, variable that I'm going to assign or that I'm going to change. And then here is what you're normally working with. And you can see the operator set to equals. And I can go ahead and change this to true. But what if it's true already? How do you change it back to false? Now here is the key that you need to keep an eye out. Normally, this is set by default, which is the assignments. Inside of programming, when you're making an assignment, you're not checking to see if it's true or false. You're basically just saying, this is now going to be true. Or this is now going to be false. Now you can still add a condition 
But sometimes in storyline, those conditions don't always run right away. And so the assignment happens before that condition even takes place. And I don't know why, but when I've tried to do that with some of it, I've just run into some issues sometimes. So this, what I'm going to show you is a better way of doing it. Instead of making the assignment, you select this drop down box and you say, this is not an assignment. This is basically checking to see if this is true. And if it's true, change it to false. If it's false, then change it to true. It's a toggle. It becomes a toggle instead of a, an assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and click on not assignment. And I'm going to make sure that this happens when something is clicked. And so I'm going to say user clicked. And what is it, uh, what is going to be clicked? Well, that's going to be the switch. So I'm going to say, okay, when the user clicks the switch, this is going to toggle that off and on. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see it says inside of Storyline toggle. So it's going to toggle that variable true and false based on what it currently is. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this. And this is really where the power comes in. I'm going to preview this. Now keep an eye on this variable up here. I'm going to go ahead and click the light switch and you can see it changes to true. Well, I'm going to click it again. It changes to false. It toggles it. It says, okay, if it's true, now become false. If it's false, now become true. Now this is very powerful. So now what I can do is I can change the states or add some triggers to change the state if that variable ever changes. I don't want to do it based on triggering it inside of the light switch here. I want to do it based on the variable switching. That way it's always listening. And so no matter what triggered this, this basically is going to change the state uh, if that variable is true or if that variable is false. And it's just a better way of basically uh, adding a trigger or having that kind of always listening if that trigger changes or if that variable changes. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new trigger. And I'm going to go ahead and select change state of select that drop down box. And we're going to change the state for, first of all to, of the switch. I want to change that switch to be on and off based on if it's true or false. So I'm going to say change the switch to on if and then this is where we're going to adjust the if the variable changes. So I'm going to come down here to variable changes and I'm going to select what variable changes. I'm going to say lights on. So it's going to change it to on if that variable changes. Now, right now, it'll change it to on no matter what that variable is. I only want it to be on if that variable is true. So I'm going to go ahead and set a condition. And then I'm going to add that condition. And that condition says if that variable is equal to, and then if it's equal to true, the value of true. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then click OK here. And now let's go ahead and preview this. And you can see that if it's set to true, you can see the light switch is now turned on. Well, I need to, you can see that it doesn't change back. So I need to add one more trigger. So I'm going to go ahead and close this preview. And I can just copy this and paste it because it's going to be a very similar thing. And so now I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and I'm going to change it back to normal if the lights on is actually equal to false. So it's going to go back to normal if it's false. If it's true, it'll change to on. If it's false, it'll change to normal. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch. There you go. I'm going to flip it again and it changes back. That's pretty much it. You can do a lot with that. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my light bulb. So I'm going to click on add change state and we want to change the state of the light bulb. We're going to switch it to on and we're going to switch it if the variable changes. So we're going to do the same thing here. The variable changes light on. If it's set to lights on is equal to true. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. And then I'm going to copy that, paste it, and then change it to normal if this is equal to false. OK, I'm going to go ahead and preview this here. And you can see, OK, it's set to false by default. I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch on. You can see it now affects the light bulb. I'm going to flip the switch off. Now this allows the you to adjust user settings or the user themselves can actually adjust the settings. You can also say um, if you have are teaching about a, a control switch or something and the learner has to click on certain controls and if you had a submit button you can check to see if this is true, this is true, this is true and that is true and if it's all true then you can say that's correct. If it's not true then you can say or if one is not true you can actually say that that's incorrect. So there is a lot that you can do here 
by just toggling, you don't have to, it reduces the amount of triggers, which means it reduces the amount of code inside of Storyline, which means that it runs quicker and there's less room for error. And so there's just a lot of uh, application here. So I just wanted to share that with you. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment in the uh, questions or in the comments below. Or if you wanted to check out more resources or uh, more training, you can check out learningdojo.net. And I'm happy to answer any questions for you. If you go to learningdojo.net and send me an email, I can answer those questions. So, so thank you, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.